Forced induction with compressed air is not something new that's being brought to no prep racing. The idea itself actually dates back to World War I aircraft where it was used to increase climb performance at high elevation. Decades later, drag racing pioneer Mickey Thompson started to experiment with the idea himself. And today, Ryan Mitchell is using it in his KC Max Firebird. So where did this revolutionary technology disappear to? And how did Ryan Mitchell figure out how to make this into a winning formula? Originally, compressed air charging was pioneered by a French engineer named Augusta Rateau around 1916 to improve the climbing performance of aircraft above 20,000 feet. And in doing so, he essentially paved the way for what would become the modern day turbocharger. Around 1962 or three, there were dragsters starting to pop up that were purely compressed air powered. But Mickey Thompson was the first one to use these tanks and to make them into boost because he got away from the parasitic loss of belt-driven superchargers, the exhaust back pressure of turbochargers, this seemed like a pretty good idea. So why did Mickey Thompson shelve the design? Well, it kind of has to do with the limitations of the day. The air tanks that were used, very heavy, very bulky, and having the equipment on hand to be able to recharge those air tanks was every bit as so. Now, the sanctioning bodies of the time also had problems with uh, having these compressed air cylinders on dragsters. It was viewed as potentially too dangerous to have something that could explode. Plus the weight of these air tanks was greater than the chassis of the day were specified to have strength for. So basically with the safety gear of the day, the sanctioning body said, nope, ain't gonna have it. So coupled with safety factors of the day, as well as the reliability and viability of root superchargers and even turbochargers starting to come online later, uh, it was very easy to see that the air tanks would be phased out of Mickey Thompson's program. Now in looking at this, there have been a couple accounts of various racers trying to employ the compressed air technology to their own programs. Uh, there have been a couple of bracket racers that have tried it. There have been various heads up racers at various levels trying to do and improve on what Mickey Thompson had started. The best ideas never truly die. So fast forward 60 years from the first attempts with Mickey Thompson, Ryan Mitchell, also known as KC Max, brings this to his Firebird, that ever so favorite platform that's seen countless engine combinations. He recently talked about that on the podcast. Recently, his Firebird is sporting this compressed air technology and actually having success with it. So what changed? So how has Ryan Mitchell taken this antiquated technology and brought it into the 21st century and proves to be putting down some serious numbers with it. So let's look at some of the things that are making this even halfway possible today. The first on the list is carbon fiber or fiber spun tanks that are far, later, far lighter than the heavy metal tanks of yesteryear. The next thing that makes this possible is current electronics with fuel injection setups make it very easy to control the amount of boost that goes into it. Other benefits that have to do with that boost is well, as soon as you decompress a gas from a high pressured state, you get a charge cooling or basically it loses temperature and can chill the intake manifold. Now, I've heard that that's actually a problem with methanol related fuels is you can cool things too far to the point where they just don't ignite. So I've heard that's why KC Max is using race gas because of its higher combustion temperature and its ability to light off at lower temperatures. So we have the benefit of decreased weight by not having the heavier turbocharger supercharger setups on there. The weight difference is essentially negligible and by being able to move those tanks in the car, he's able to achieve a better weight balance that he's looking for to make the car work in various situations. So it seems like on the surface, there really isn't a losing issue here, save for refilling the tanks. Other interesting benefits that I myself as a bracket racer are very interested in is basically being able to completely remove atmospheric weather from the situation. By essentially creating your own environment in the intake manifold, uh, outside temperature, barometric pressure, humidity, all those things are reduced. All those variables go right away. He stated that he can make the same pass at sea level and all the way up at, uh, you know, like Denver, Colorado area, way up there in elevation. He's able to create the same kind of environment and essentially 
In a perfect world, make the car do the same thing in the same place with the same setup. Other nice features of that setup is he's able to control the boost to an absolute finite level. If he wants a little bit more in a certain part of the RPM range, he can do it very easily. Personally, I think by being able to control so many variables is an absolutely genius idea to be able to make the car perform the same way every time as well as have a good baseline to make improvement from. So essentially what Mickey Thompson did 60 years prior, Ryan Mitchell is now doing today with devastatingly good results. So what do you think? Do you think this is actually a viable thing? Are we going to see more race teams pick this up? Is this something that's going to become more common? Or is this one of those interesting ideas that essentially fades with time. This has got me thinking, what would be the ideal car to put a setup like that in? Certainly, trucks and El Caminos have the advantage. We've got nothing but space back here for uh, compressed air tanks, as an example. It's also got me wondering what other long-forgotten old-school hot-rodding tricks are becoming more popular in today's world. I don't know. Time to go do some research. Thanks for watching, guys, and if you like this, check out this video over here. Thanks for watching.